At least the floor is easy to clean up. <laughs> this flavor sucks. Say something. Hi. Are you, you're eating? <laughs> I'm hungry. I can't hear. I can't hear anything. You're really. Am I cute. talking quiet or loud? Or what? like middle? You're kind of normal. I can't hear myself talking at all. Now you're loud. Say something loud. I love you. You're not even talking. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> I've been working with Cove a lot on the channel. I've used these headphones for the better half of a year now, and they're just so insane. These are the Cove NCH noise canceling headphones. I had always been kind of skeptical about noise canceling stuff, but this thing works insanely well. For one, it's got incredibly good audio. If you guys know me, I'm big into music, and I like, I mean, I, I play music. I like post production, and I like good sound. These have that, but the noise canceling feature is insane. If you travel or anything like that, they're really cool too because you can fold them up. You can do this whole deal. They play up to 12 hours of music or 200 hours of standby. They've also got a microphone built into it too, so for hands-free calling. And they're incredibly comfortable. They've got memory foam stuff around here. If you guys work out or travel or whatever it is, look, they even, if you're dumb like me, they, they tell you which one's right and left. Here's the cool thing. I can save you guys over 65% off. That makes these pretty much the most affordable headphones on the market. With this quality, comfort, so you guys check out these Cove noise canceling headphones. These things are insane. Today is amazing for so many. What is going on with the, my broom up here, dude? I don't know what's going on upstairs. It's the first time I haven't worn jorts since like March. So you guys are probably psyched about that. <laughs> Two, it feels amazing outside. It hasn't been below like 90 degrees, I think in four months. Three, we got the coolest shop forever. And four, to be completely honest with you guys, over the past, what well, we moved in this house four months ago? Almost five months? Oh my. The first couple months, I wasn't able to even work on cars because my lift that was in the garage had a hydraulic leak. And that wasn't fixed for about two months. So I had nothing to really do. And then I used it for about a month, helped my sister do some stuff, wide bodied her car. And then we started the shop. And so for two something months now, I've had to kind of like not really work on cars a bunch because I've been waking up early every single morning, making sure I'm watching contractors filming what they're doing for one, but also making sure they're doing the right thing. This is the first day in five Five months, I am able to just get back to work and just do what I do. So it's been kind of weird and I'm really impressed and really thankful for you guys watching over the last few months because honestly, it's been completely different and obviously my channel's about cars and this shop was, you know, all about cars, but, but it's kind of weird feeling. It's like, it's like I've, I'm employed again today <laughs> and I got my Gucci slides, so can't complain at all. Now that the Shank Shack's operational, we've got to move in. First off, the, the weather app lied. I was gonna wear jeans today, but now it's like 80 degrees. So sorry, you guys gotta see my stupid knees again. First thing before we get anything done, I honestly am kind of excited to work on this. Like it's like the first day I can actually just work on stuff, no limits. The first thing I'm doing is the incredibly easiest ta task in the world, and that's raising my car. So this car, uh, the rear suspension is perfect, but the, if you guys remember the picture I posted on Instagram, it's a little low in the front, it scraped a little bit on the ground. And so uh, I'm probably just gonna raise the front suspension. Like, look how, look how Look at this little DC racing. Look at that little, little guy. Hey, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna raise it up probably a, an inch or so, just so I can still drive spiritedly. And then also something's rubbing on the on the rotor, and so I found it. It's this guy right here, and he got bent. So I gotta bend him back out. Oh, that so, guy gotcha. This guy right there. I'd like to know if you can actually adjust the brake pressure on these calipers because. These uh, these pads are made for a Volvo. These you can't really just like buy Evo three pads in the U.S. So, anyways, I'm gonna just mess around with this, tinker with this. But uh, I'm gonna raise this guy up a little bit, and then now I'll be able to just do whatever. I wasn't recording that whole freaking time. I was like, yeah, I mean, me talking is going way too smoothly right now. I must not be recording, anyways. So I lowered this down. It's at a perfect ride. <laughs> 
and I also secured the OEM bumper on this guy. So it's not gonna flap around anymore. I secured the brake duct that rams air to the brakes and cools them off a little bit. Fixed that little dust shield and voila. And so I wanted to make I wanted to make sure that the ride height was good before we corner balance the car. Now it should be a perfect ride height to just go put around the neighborhood and rip through some corners. Once we get the 17s built by Heritage Wheel, this uh, they're gonna fill out the fenders a little bit more and the car's gonna just look immaculate. Anyways, what was I saying? What did I just say? Today, that's not what we're really gonna do. We've got lots to move into the shank shack. As you can see, it's empty right now and we have tons of stuff in the garage. Stuff like, well, we're not gonna be setting this up until we make walls, which by the way, we will be doing. Trans jacks, cool bosses, tables like this. Monster cans with a dead freaking ant on it. Most of the car parts in here. Cars included, including the Supra and my boy Jerome, like you cut chief, and a 2JZ. So I got 2JZ, all this stuff, including like detailing equipment, leftover boxes and parts, cherry pickers, my roll around car for detailing stuff, the thing that I drain oil in the oil drain, I guess. Finally gonna be making, after two months, my shop, the hub of all the crap in my garage. We got the first car driven on the shank shack floor. You had to wait like, I think a day, a full 24 hours for it to be okay to drive on. And so, there you go, GTR. You got the first honors. Charging this bad girl up. Let's see if she starts. Should have enough voltage now. Nice. Bro, you are chilling right now, my dude. moving stuff in sounds good we got to figure out at some point where do we want to do like and I know obviously we're gonna be doing walls so we can't put shelves and stuff up yet but today we need to start figuring out exactly where everything's going because yeah, layout and stuff. we need to know layout for sure but we're working with a cool graphics company and we're gonna have like a nice like mural slash wrap this is gonna be sick I'm really this this is coming together way cooler than I thought it would be honestly <laughs> I kind of just thought it was gonna be a concrete pad to have some cars on but it's the it's becoming the shank shack the, the rolly stuff doesn't really matter. Okay. The stuff that rolls is not really as important. I think this area, I'm gonna just put engines and stuff here for now. Like I'll work on my Evo's engine here. It's a darker area, so if I, you know, oil, water stuff spills. So we'll probably do engines around this, these, like this area right here. I'm going to reserve this as my literal like workspace. We have made the double purlin set up for specifically for having a workspace and all these plugs too. But also we have the air compressor. Um, this is also just for like extra equipment, like for charging stuff. So all of my battery powered stuff I can charge over here. And I think we're gonna end up making, like drawing it out to about here or something like that for a workspace and they'll probably have a table right here or something, but. So workspace, you think like stops at this window? I would, I would say so, but. So we could use like this for shelves maybe? Maybe, yeah. But I mean, we're gonna need a lot of shelf space. So I would say maybe even like shelf, shelf. But for now, let's just put engines here. Let's put our assembly table just somewhere around here. And then we can just put other stuff, you know, other everywhere else. Here comes the fun part of trying to figure out what the hell to do with this humongous space. <laughs> And I, you were correct. Let's start clearing out the garage. I just want to move my 2JZ out of the garage. Put it in here. here we go. It's terrifying. Huh? It's terrifying. 
terrifies me. Why? Because it's a 700 pound motor? Just cantilevered out. You gotta be careful. Right? If I got this thing from our old house to here and into this garage by myself, I think we're good. Okay? Easy peasy. Oh my god. Not my favorite. We should almost put that ring out. There's a reason there's a tire under this. Okay. Last little one. Come on, TJ. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we did it. I'd love to have a TV here. Okay. Xbox going. Like here. Then I'll never see you. Cherry picker. We're gonna do this for the Evo. We're gonna be using this guy really soon for you, Evo. Kind of excited to use this table. Don't know exactly why I'll be using it, but I'll use it. You're a cool boss. I know. <laughs> oh yeah. Is a trans no, you know what? Actually, no, this is a car lift. <laughs> this is a whole lift. company so this most likely is going to be a temporary toolbox even though it works and it holds my tools I mostly use that little piece of crap anyways if we do end up getting tool stuff and organizing this a little bit and making it really cool probably just gonna put this one over there for the other car that I'm working on just have like quick grab tools so we'll see oh look how cute this is second monster of the day <laughs> Back when we both actually had time, we used to travel around together. We both got a little bit busy, but you know what? I think it's been worth it. For the most part, everything is in the shank shack. We 100% need walls. So for one, I want to cover up all this ugly spray foam. Two, we need walls, we need structure. I need stuff to like put part, not particle board, but like, um, what's the little board called that you, pegboard, like pegboard type stuff, just to hang tools and stuff on. I mean, and now we need to just kind of make a list on the things we think we might need. For one, a big industrial massive broom. <laughs> Maybe a Roomba with a flashlight underneath it too so it can keep lighting up the floor. By the way, the floor has to be charged by, by light, in case you guys didn't know that. So if the lights don't stay on all day, then it doesn't charge the floor. And the, the charge will go away over time, which kind of sucks. <laughs> Look, it's kind of looking like a shop. Not really, but it's looking like it. I don't even know what to do with all this space. I guess first things first, we're gonna need a bigger trash can. He's still a small. So we need a lot of wood. Probably gonna have to go to a wholesaler for that. Big trash can. Big trash can, industrial Big. broom. Get the get the moppy kind of broom and then also the push broom as well. Okay. Those are both so important. I don't even know. I don't know what size of shelves to get. Wag the depth. I mean, do I just buy a forklift? <laughs> get like the big I don't know. Boost a forklift, baby. Let's do that. We could probably do some like big like Home Depot warehouse kind of shelves back there. I don't know, man. It's not my specialty to organize and make a place this big look good. I don't even know. I literally don't know what to do with myself at this point. What I am happy about though is I do just have crap tons of room to work on my cars and that's obviously the most important thing for me. Like I have tons of room. Look how bright this place just looks and feels right now. And it's just like, 
we need a lot of wood for over here because if we're gonna make our own custom benches, we need a way to mount stuff like this. Like once my compressor gets here, I have a hose reel for the compressor. But for stuff like this, we're gonna need some sort of structure. So we'll have to get some, we'll have to get a bunch of like half inch or three quarter inch OSB and they just go all like this. But then we're gonna have to make like every, we'll have to make every 10 inches or so, we'll have to make like studs or something like that to go in between. And it's gonna be a decent amount of work. And then I'll probably, we actually did just buy a paint gun to stain our fence. So I might, I might rent a scissor lift and, and actually paint the ceiling black. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, because that might take a really long time. We should get a bumping sound system. We need to go to Best Buy and buy a big ass TV. Yeah. Mm hmm. 65 inch right there. Boo! Fours are going all the time. This is honestly so cool. Just seeing, like, having this little area, a dedicated area of just engine crap. Like, that is the automotive dream, honestly. After all these years of doing all this stuff on my back or hunched over, you know, thankfully I have had a lift for a little over a year now. After all, I mean, just this space is just motivational. That's crazy. I mean, <clears throat> as for my actual garage, I think Laticrete wants to come and redo that. They're going to do some more stuff to our house. I'm pretty excited about it. But this is just, this is just going to be a lift to hold temporary stuff. And I might, um, once this is actually starting to get going, I'll put this on the lift in there, but I might hold my Civic and my Z in here or something like that. It might sound weird, but I'm actually kind of excited for my garage, like my house garage to feel like a house garage and not an automotive car garage with oil everywhere. I am too, because I can actually park in it now. But like, we'll have a, we'll have a lawnmower, like a normal garage, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It'll be sweet. Since we don't have any champagne or anything to celebrate the day of the official Shank Shack opening, first day it's usable, I got a white claw and I'm gonna shake it up. If you spray me. We're gonna have a party. That was really lame. Ah! <laughs> At least the floor is easy to clean up. <coughs> this flavor sucks. Let's go. Along with the Cove thing, I also want you guys to know that today is the last day you guys can use my code at Griot's and be entered into winning a complete power washer and foam kit. Basically, if you just need some detailer or literally everything in the world, whatever it is, use my code today, you get entered into winning a giveaway for a free whole entire power washer plus the foaming kit. Griot's, by the way, all their liquid carcade products are made right here in the USA, but they're full-time chemists. Amazing stuff. They all smell good and they work better than any product that I've used. Everything that they sell is absolutely incredible. So if you wanna do this, Power washer and all. Today's the last day you can use that code to be entered. I, <laughs> it's uh, putting the camera down and looking at everything, especially in person, it's just way different. But I mean, I'm sure on here it's pretty cool too. It feels like it's been such a long road. <sighs> you know, this also, this has nothing to do with what I, like the photo I just showed you guys. This just, this came to mind and I tweeted this and I'm, you know, it's, this is crazy. This is, this is my daily advice, I suppose, but, it's interesting to me. I've, I've, I've watched this trend, not only for myself, but for my, friend, my other friends and, and, and people alike. It's crazy. The people are so supportive and people want the best for you until you're doing better than they are, at least in their minds. It blows my mind how many fake people are out there. And listen, I don't really, I don't know. I, I can't relate because if my friends built something like this, I'd be like, dude, that is killer, amazing, love it. Make sure that make sure that the people you spend your time around are not gonna be the type of people that don't want anything to do with you anymore after you start doing well for yourself. It is literally insane how many people you will know in your life that you think that they're like there for you, they're, they're really good friends with you, and then as soon as you, I don't know what triggers it or I don't know what like the, the point is like I've lost something. It's just, like what irritates me. This is it's really dumb. But like people that like I, I knew once, you know, I was good friends with. They used to follow me on Instagram or something. I'm like they'll unfollow me or something. Like I don't know. Does it, do you just not want to see how I'm doing? I, I I don't I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I've never understand that con understood that concept. But stay as far away as possible from people that are envious and that feed off of envy, honestly, and just don't ever want to be proud of you.
It's honestly really hard to find. I'm not gonna lie. It is very hard to find because natural. Uh, listen, naturally we all want to be envious of somebody else. Like, I don't understand that type of thing, but just stay away from those types of people. Stay away from those types of people. For one, if, and if you're that type of person, I want you to know that comparison is the thief of joy. It is the thief of joy. You will never, ever be happy if all you do is compare, 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 compare. Live your own life. Keep your head down, work hard. Unfortunately, and if you're the type of person that wants to keep your head down, work hard, make something of yourself, I'm just gonna let you know, you're gonna lose a lot of people. At the end of the day, as long as you're a loving person, you're still, no matter what, you're still kind to all of those people, you still love them, would do anything for them, then that's what makes you an amazing person. But this is a weird rant, I guess, but uh, it, is, it is crazy, honestly. That's it guys, and I want to thank you guys for watching me, and I want you to, I want you guys to know, when you see people like me or whoever you watch, there's so many people you watch on the internet, take this as the last word I say, don't be jealous of these people. Use these people to motivate you. There's two, there are two options when you see somebody that has something cooler or better than you. You can either be jealous of them or you can be motivated by them, and that is your personal choice. Y'all have an amazing day, and uh, so I love you guys. Stoked, because next video we're starting the Evo. Peace! Oh, that actually hurt my hand. Oh, I've done that, I've done that a thousand times and actually hurt my hand, bro. That was ridiculous. Um, watch those two videos, by the way, and uh, subscribe.